strongholds. The Bible says in Psalm 62, 11, God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. A former preacher, pastor friend of mine, former teacher, always tell me, he's always say this, if God has all the power, who has the rest? And this scripture supports that. If God has all the power, who has the rest? I, I, I saw an interesting <laughs> quote the other day, Sister Branch, that says, nobody's no cannot compete with God's yes. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody's no cannot yeah. compete with God's yes. I don't care what they may say, if God has it set for you to have, their no can't compete with his yes. Mm -hmm. But the one thing we have to understand this, Proverbs 23 says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Okay? So if we know nobody's no can compete with God's yes, we as followers of Christ, we have to think that we can do all things through Christ Jesus. And as a person thinks, will set the course of their life. And we as Christians have to take accountability. How many know God does not drop pie from the sky? Anybody ever heard that term? God does not drop pie from the sky. I haven't heard it before. Uh, you ever heard that? My daddy all said that. God don't drop pie. I mean, God, <laughs> I mean, you take the first step, God will do the rest. Amen? Amen. But we have to, what, take the first step. And that step mm -hmm. is a step of, we walk by faith, right? And not by sight. Right. And not by sight. Nowhere mm -hmm. in the Bible did God not perform a miracle without asking that person to take a step. Every miracle, every situation, every overcoming situation in the Bible required a step of faith. Amen? Amen? He told Abraham, go. Abraham said, okay, where? He said, just go. And Abraham went. Amen? Amen. This is one of many examples where God has commanded us and the same God that commanded Abraham to go and I'm going to make you a father of many nations is the same God that's telling us today, you want to overcome your strongholds, you got to take the first step. And we know that God's yes, nobody can stop God's yes over your life. But the question is, how are we thinking? Are we thinking that we are more than overcomers? Or are we thinking that we're going to lose? So I have a question for anybody. Why are many people satisfied living under strongholds? This for anybody. Why are so many people satisfied we're living under strongholds or why can't some people seem to overcome? I think um, it has a lot to do sometimes with um, how comfortable somebody is in a situation. Like, yeah. yes, this situation or thing may not be like helpful. It may be a negative thing, but because we're so comfortable, familiar with it, it's hard to make the transition. Amen. You're absolutely right. Why? What? Who else? Anyone else? Why can't some people seem to overcome? Sister Lepray said they're comfortable in their situation. What else? What else can we think of? Do you like changes? Said it one more time, ma'am. Do you like changes in the life? I can't hear you one more time. Can you speak a little louder, please? 
People don't like changes in their life. They want to stay the same. They don't want no better for themselves. Amen. People don't like changes in their life. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. I do. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, I think maybe um, it's part of their family, you know. We've always done it this way, right? Yeah, because your if your parents say we're going to church and your grandma say we're going to church, everybody's going to church, whether you like it or not. Or Amen. if they don't go to church. Or if they don't. We never went to church. Minister Branch always said that. He's like, I wasn't raised in a church. <laughs> <laughs> he said to me, oh, I wasn't raised in a church. But there are some folks who are satisfied with their conditions. No matter how much is keeping them stuck or in some cases destructive, they are satisfied. And some people will die in their strongholds. You can only, like I said, you, you, ever, you ever heard the term I can take a horse to the water, but I can't make it drink. We can give you the word of God all day long. It's up to you to apply it to your life. It's up to you to apply it to your life. I don't care how much good teaching or preaching you're under. If you don't want to make application to your life, you won't overcome. And the Bible says faith comes by what? Yeah hearing the word of God. So how do you increase your faith to overcome? You have to hear it. And after you hear it, you have to apply it. You just made a post about that. I can't, I don't know what day it was, but I just seen it today talking about accountability. Yeah. I feel like that's something that a lot of people lack nowadays, like just accountability or like it is my responsibility to like apply these things. Yeah. Yeah. Folks want to blame everybody for their problems. I think everybody in this call, I'm, I'm a black man. I'm black. Blackity black. <laughs> you know, I have the black American experience. I raised in Baltimore City for most of my life. Single parent household. My dad was my life. I'm just using me as an example. I'm sure many of us can say the same thing. I have every reason to say why I can't be successful. The white man's hold me back. I didn't go to the right schools. I didn't have my father in my house. I had to work at 13. I can give you all these reasons why I can't overcome. Right? But when I accepted Christ Jesus as my Lord and Savior, he told me, I am more than a conqueror. Man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, yes. somebody. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Who still lay any charge against God's elect? Nay, in all things, we are more than overcomers through him that what? Loved us. So despite that you may have been born on the wrong side of the railroad tracks, despite you may be black in America, despite you may have one parent household, you may not have any parents or your mom may have been on drugs or dad may have been in jail. Or you may have been raised by your grandmother. You've been for, we can go down a list of all the things that we can throw in a towel in life and say, I can't overcome. But when you come to know him and you take him at his what? Word. Word. Who shall lay anything to God's elect? And who was God's elect? You. You are God's elect. And if you are God's elect, he's telling you, you are more than a conqueror. Right. And I tell folks, ain't nothing special. I, 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 I was one step off. I hope I don't offend anybody. But I was one step off riding a short bus to school. 
uh, ain't, ain't nothing bright about me. I'm not no brilliant person. Like this dude was brilliant. No, you went to all the private schools. No, in public. I didn't graduate from college, cum laude. I graduated. Thank you, Lordy. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I, I got out of here. Mm -hmm. And I'm yes, sure you yes, all can yes. say the same thing. It's like coming out the projects. Coming out the projects. No, when it's a brand from here, in the big building. I'm like, <laughs> so you live in those buildings with, with the fence? I used to be scared <laughs> driving past there. Like, yeah, no, I, I, we I talking live about... in but I don't live there. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm not I know somebody Brandon, like that. I look at them big high rise projects <laughs> like, whoo, Lord, I'm glad we, ain't, we don't live there, man. We well, live in Libby Heights, but we don't live there. But some people don't want to leave <laughs> their comfort zone because yeah. you was born and raised there, and that's all you know. And it's comfortable for you. So they don't want to leave. Yeah. That's, that's their life. So that's, that's yep. been said twice about being comfortable yep. or maybe raised a certain way. You know, a lot of times, um, at least I, I think I've said it, and I, probably everybody said it at least once. Mm -hmm. You know, you might say something like, you know, nothing ever good comes my way. My or Lord. you might say, you know, I don't do anything right. Yes. What's the truth? That's neither one of those neither are true. I do good things do come my way. Yes, they do. You know, and I do some things right. Yes. So strongholds are lies that we have believed and embraced, and you can get comfortable with a lie. Yes. You can see that lie in somebody else's life and take it on for yourself as well. But yes. it boils down to one thing. It's a lie that you embraced. Amen. And Amen. you can rehearse that thing over and over in your head so much that you don't, you think that's the way it's supposed to be. And that's Amen. a lie. That's a lie. Amen. You know, Amen. some we have some families, I saw a study, some families believe that welfare is a job. And they raise the next generation to go on welfare and the next and the next. And they ask some young kids, they say, it's a job. Being a welfare is a job. That's a stronghold. Yeah, that's, a, that's the mentality they have because I know a person, she um, she stayed on welfare, welfare too. Her daughter was 17. And then she mm -hmm. said she stayed on it because she didn't have to work. And she oh, said, Lord. she said, and everything's free right now. So she said when her daughter turns 17, she's going back to work. And she oh, meant that too. You don't have no choice. Yeah. Because they you shop to 17. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can I had a um mm -hmm. a client that ha like had this same mentality too. Um, this particular client, probably like four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, she had six children. <laughs> Made sure that every child was tested for a disability. My lord. Collected uh SSI food stamps, like uh tan, like everything, like for each one of these children. And she didn't work, you know, when I was working with her, and I worked with her for like a good probably three years. Like so it was it was just unbelievable, like watching her. And it was a like, you know, I go, gotta say this, gotta do this, make sure you get this amount. Like it was, it was crazy. I had never seen it before in my life. Yes. No. My Lord. Mm -hmm. And then they pass it on to the next generation who repeats right. it. Mm -hmm. They become the next mm -hmm. generation teacher yep. and teach them how to do what he's doing. Exactly. And they think that's right. And Most then, people say, the I can beat them. I can beat the system. Pray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Let's not only talk about the women with the children. We just we just use that for example. You know, um, we just use that for example. We're not picking on women. We just use that for example. That, no, I'm just saying because it's a known fact. You know, um, I rather, you know, when I, when I go in a store and I see people, women spending food stamps with children, I rather for them mm -hmm. to spend the food stamps with the children 
But what about some of these some of these lazy men that don't want to work in a pie factory and that want a woman and think that a woman is supposed to take care of them? Amen. Don't That's take wrong. care. Don't take care. That's wrong. That right. They don't. They don't want to work. I you know. Two. They don't. They don't want work. I had two dumb uncles women like out that. not take care. Of. The dumb women out not right. take care. Of. I have two uncles mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Both of my I'm uncles are like them. that. And my mother was like, you're not going to grow wow. up to be like your uncle. I was, I heard that all my right. life. You're not going to be like Good. your uncles. Right. Amen. Right. And she put that Maybe in, you're man. not going to be like your uncles, Damon. And my aunt would tell my cousin Bishop Bar, you're That's not gonna right. be like your uncles. And both boys mm -hmm. went on one too. Yeah. You okay in life. But mom drilled mm -hmm. that in me. You ain't gonna be like them laying on a couch and letting some lady take care of you. God called mm -hmm. you to lead and protect, not to right. walk around with a pacifier in your mouth at 40 years old. My God. No matter how long or how hard mm -hmm. the stronghold. God has equipped all of us for greatness through Christ Jesus. And greatness does not right. mean being a king of the world or having all that. Greatness means knowing who you are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So the question we have asked ourselves, do you want to overcome? Hallelujah. Yes, you yes. got to break out of that. Do you want to break out of it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because God would not be allow intentional. it. Say that one time, Mr. Branch. It has to be intentional. Intentional. Amen. Because God will not violate your free will. Mm -hmm. He didn't make you a robot. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't make us robots. He gave us all a free will. Choose okay. this day who are you going to serve? That's what Joshua said. But for me and my house, we're going to serve, serve the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to serve the Lord. How many of y'all can say for mm -hmm. you and your house, you're going to serve the Lord? Amen. If I got servant by Amen. myself, That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. If you got servant by yourself, you serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Numbers 14, 18 says this. The Lord is long suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgressions, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. If that family, or if you don't break that stronghold curse, it's going to go to the next, and then to the next. Repentance is, mm -hmm. if repentance is not forthcoming, judgment will definitely come. Hallelujah. We must first acknowledge our shortcomings. Who here is perfect? If you're perfect, raise your hand. Go ahead and say, I'm perfect. I'm the cat's I'm meow, good. the dog's bow wow. I'm perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I'm the cow's <laughs> moo. You know, I'm the, I'm all that in a bag of chips. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody can say that? Hallelujah. There's only one perfect yes, person no. I know that walked this earth. And what was his name? Jesus. So first thing we have to do to overcome these strongholds, we must acknowledge, hey, I got some shortcomings, Lord. Confess, mm -hmm. Lord, I got some shortcomings I need help in. And that's right. between you and God. Now, if you got somebody you're close to, hey, you can share like, hey, help pray with me through some of this. But confess mm -hmm. to the Lord, hey, I got some shortcomings. I got a stronghold in my life that I need to overcome. And ask God to help mm -hmm. us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So that we don't carry that stronghold or that trauma and give it to the next generation. 
Mm-hmm. Amen or ouch. Ouch. Amen. <laughs> Somebody say ouch. Amen. Ouch. Mm-hmm. I mean, we all should want our loved ones, our children to go on and do bigger and better things than us, right? Amen. That's the that's the prayer. Mm-hmm. And we have to be very mindful that we, if I pass, if we pass anything down, let's pass the love of of God. Let's pass down that hey, baby, you are more than an overcomer. Mm-hmm. Let's pass the word of God down to the next, so they can overcome and break what folks call generational curses or strongholds over our lives. How many know disrespect strongholds oftentimes occur in, occur in the family? Mm, yes, yes, yes. Why do we treat mm-hmm. people in our family worse than we pe- treat people on our job? You can get away with it. <laughs> 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 I feel like that can kind of go along with us, like how comfortable people can be. Like outside, you know, you don't know 100% how somebody's going to react to disrespect. But in the house, I know my mom, she likes, she's passive. So I know I could talk her or talk to her any type of way or do whatever and not receive a consequence. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I couldn't do that to my father or mother. They knocked me out. I won't be here today. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> why do we oftentimes treat our jobs better than we treat our church? Oh. Mm-hmm. Pretty good pay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mine. Mine. Amen or out somebody. Ouch, ouch. <laughs> I'm glad I'm sorry. Now I know I'm some folks like my, know. I know some folks may say, well, my job pays me, um, Pastor. Okay, yeah. Exactly. But God gives you eternal life. No, so that's the Lord. No, that's Amen. Right. Mm-hmm. How many know let's if you treat your church better than you example. can treat your job? God will bless you beyond you can, your comprehension. That's right. No, I've been there. Mm-hmm. Don't yes, forget. It's, like, it's just like <laughs> keeping your church clean. Keeping it clean. Keeping, as opposed to keeping your house, as opposed to keeping your, your house clean. If you want to keep house your clean. house clean, you're going to keep your church clean. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh-huh. You ain't gonna go there and throw, throw some people throw rappers and, and all of that and you know and stand children stand up in the chair and all of that. Then I stand up in no chair in my house, mm-hmm. not about, my mother's house. What so, about what about ahead, church? Sir. What about church starting on time and you come late every Sunday? Oh, my well, God. I'm guilty. <laughs> <of that. laughs> Yeah, we want time for our job, though, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Some of us are. Amen. Some of us are custom. How about how about treating? God knows. God knows. So. I was at a church meeting one time. <laughs> and the, 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 I was at a church meeting one time, and, and it, it, it got a little heated in this church meeting. Right, it got a little heated. Now the the pastor, he's the under shepherd, right? Should should that person should he be treated with respect? Should he be treated with respect? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Should. Should be. Yeah. At this should. church meeting, yeah. these folks were talking so bad to him. Mm-hmm. I had to ask them, why y'all treating him like that? Not saying he was right and everything. Mm-hmm. But you don't talk to your boss that way. That's right. right. He has charged, and the pastor is has charged. He's trying to protect your soul. That's right. Mm -hmm. So why are you talking to him Mm -hmm. like that? 
Where's the respect? Where's the honor? Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Or each other. We the family of mm -hmm. God. We're supposed to treat each other with the utmost respect. Well, to me, God, they might he might not um have Bible study because you got to learn, you gotta be taught. You just can't do stuff, you know. Amen. Everything has to come. Um the Lord, what do you say? He wants everything um decent decent, decent in order. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, but the sister uh, branch. Mm -hmm. We had that church I was part of had Bible study every Wednesday night. But ask oh. me how many people showed up. Hi. <laughs> On a good <laughs> night, you may get a couple. Uh -huh. oh. Wow. wow. Now, sir, no. You're no. I knew a, I knew a pastor. Well, one, of my, one of my favorite um YouTube pastors. Um his name is Pastor Terry Anderson in Texas. And he said when he went to his new church in Texas, when he was leaving his former church in Louisiana to go pastor this church, Lily Grove in, in, in Texas, his first Sunday mm -hmm. there, they said, um, he said, they said, come out to um come in and for for Sunday school, okay? He said, mm -hmm. when I showed up for Sunday school, the church was packed. And I thought, man, am I late in the mm. service? They said, no, this is Sunday school. <laughs> Mm -hmm. they, they said, they said, we want you to come back for Bible study. He said, I walked in Bible study, church was packed. I said, this is, this is, the oh, this recording Bible study. started. And he said, that's when he knew these folks wanted to learn because they right. came to Sunday school and right. Bible study more than they came to church oftentimes because oh, yeah. Sunday service is going to feed you. But nothing's going to teach you like Bible study in a Sunday school class. Right. Sunday school. That's right. We don't we don't have the opportunity to break the word of God down on Sunday morning like we do tonight. That's right. And Minister and Sister Brand said, yeah. um, you got to come to Bible study. Yeah, um, we have it, but do folks want to come and learn it? Right. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Amen. 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 So I have a question. Why are some ways of thinking or our actions that show disrespect in the family? What are some ways our thinking or our actions show disrespect not only to your household family, but to your church family? What are some things we do? Some actions we do that show disrespect? I think for, for both settings, um, gossiping. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ouch. Amen. <laughs> Ouch, somebody. Oh. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh. Ouch. Last I checked, Sister LaPre, that's an abomination. Oh. Yeah. It happens all the time. <laughs> we want to talk about we want to talk about homosexuality. What about that gossip tongue? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Or that tongue that caused dissension and stirs up trouble among the brethren. Woo! Gala Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Galatians 5. What's the, what's the Galatians 5, Pastor? Woo! A whole lot of things is going to keep people. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. My Lord. That's a stronghold in the church. Yeah. The devil, like, if I could keep division and strife, that church would never move forward. Because how can two walk together unless mm -hmm. they what? Okay. Agree. 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 You ever see what's that? You ever see um? <laughs> what's the, I'll try to use that that analogy. Um, it'll come to me. But we have to be in, in unity, in unison, mm -hmm. walking together in harmony. Yes, Pastor. Yes, Pastor. Right. In peace. It's so easy to talk about somebody, and it's hard, and it's so hard to pray for somebody. Why is that? 
<laughs> crazy. I'm just keeping it real. If you really appreciate it. And we had that same intensity to love on each other and, and respect each other and hold each other That's up. That's right. Like the song said, ain't nobody stopping us now. We on the move. Mm-hmm. It's funny. I, I look at this. The nation of Islam is huge in America. Mm -hmm. I said they got the right method they just got the wrong message Mm -hmm. right right they they're unified they walking together in Mm -hmm. unity with the wrong Mm -hmm. message what about if the church we got the right message Jesus Christ died Mm -hmm. he rose He's coming again. That's the message. That's the gospel. Mm-hmm. But the devil keeps us so divided because we don't want to come together. Oh. What's mm-hmm. what's Louis Farrakhan's title? What's his title? What's his title? What they call him? Mm-hmm. Minister. Minister. Minister Louis Farrakhan. He right, had over a million right. followers throughout the country, right? Mm-hmm. Minister. Yeah. And we got some churches who may got 10 members and you got to call me chief apostle. Uh, mm-hmm. Cause we get so caught up in titles and in division that we can't move forward. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think um, the Older people love those um, auxiliaries and all that kind of stuff, and um, and want to be known, want to be seen. They mm-hmm. smile it. They all mm-hmm. dressed in white, or they all dressed in purple or green, and oh. they doing something for the church. So they ha- have a big meeting, mm-hmm. and um, they want to be recognized. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I that the Lord want us to go back to the altar. And he want us to um, he wants to pray for each other yes. in of our country. Right. God and wants us to, until we get out. to that point, we have it's a stronghold on America. Yes. It's a it's a stronghold on us. Sister Branch, I was reading um first John, second John, and third John. That's been my reading this week. The epistle, right? And all he, all, he starts out all his chapters, little children, little children, little children. Mm-hmm. But he was talking mm-hmm. to grown folks. Oh, oh wow. Because God wants us to come to him as a childlike. Right. Amen. Humble. Humble. Yeah. Little children, mm-hmm. humble yourself before the mighty hand of God and watch him move. I'm a witness. God will give you exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. If you humble mm-hmm. yourself, break that stronghold of pride that's in our church. Mm-hmm. Pride. Break it. Bring it down. What are you proud of? You, we, we're dirt people. Don't take a bath mm-hmm. for two weeks. <laughs> oh my God. Woo. Thank you. Thank See you. what happens. <laughs> oh, oh. I don't want to smell it. No. Hey, 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 I'm just saying, I'm just letting you know, we're dirt folks. Mm-hmm. When, you, when, right. when, the spirit, when the spirit leaves this body, this body will go back to what? It it does. Does. The dust. Mm-hmm. Isaiah 51 1 and 2 says this Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock whence you are hewn, and to the hole of the pit which you are digged. 
Look unto Abraham, mm. your father, and unto Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. So what is Isaiah saying here to the to the nation, of, to the children of Israel? What is he saying? What is he saying to them? And what is God Repent. saying to us? Repent. What does hearken mean? Pay attention. Listen. Listen. Yeah. Take me. Let it Take go. Me. Pay attention. Follow mm -hmm. me. Then he used Abraham and Sarah as example. Follow them. How I bless them because they follow me. And I'll bless you if you hearken unto me as Abraham and Sarah and they, they were blessed. You'll be blessed. Mm -hmm. Iniquity is a bend in our nature toward sin. And it could be a habit or an attitude or any way of thinking that's transferred from generation to generation. How many know we all picked up some bad habits in our lives? Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. we picked up some bad habits in our lives. Some some generational iniquities that we've passed on. Mm -hmm. My grandfather, I, I like to share my family, but they've been delivered, so I can share. They don't mind. My dad, he's been uh, alcohol free now, going on eleven years. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. He was an alcoholic for 50 years. Wow. He started mm -hmm. drinking at 17. Wow. And guess what he guess where he learned that from? His father. His father. He learned from his wow. father. From his dad. Mm -hmm. Well, my father was like that, and I ain't want to marry or be like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I ain't like it. Right. Amen. I you got to understand this. I do. Iniquity, iniquity, which is sin, iniquity means a sinful behavior that you're deliberately doing. That's right. Okay? Uh, it's, it's, it's the difference between it's like first degree murder and second degree murder first degree murder you wow. had intentions on killing somebody second degree heat of passion I didn't want to kill him but man I lost my temper mm -hmm. iniquity is like you think it I'm going to do it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that iniquity will continue to pass from generation to generation if that stronghold or that mindset is not confronted and torn down with the word of God. Mm -hmm. And I believe that we all have overcome or we're still overcoming some iniquitous behaviors that we've learned. It got real quiet. <laughs> yeah, because I think we we are mm -hmm. quiet because we think about what we have done, yeah, and, and thinking about what passed down from our generation, yeah, you know, because um, our children now is looking at YouTube and TikTok, where we was once um reading books, yeah, right. yeah. big difference, yeah. So you really don't, at night, you don't really know what your children are looking at. Uh -huh. Well, we got to yeah. understand this in Proverbs 23, 4, as he think of in his heart, so he is. Mm -hmm. The strongholds in our mind block us from identifying iniquities that are still present and bringing destruction to our lives. The way we think will set the course of our life. Mm -hmm. And the devil loves to use strongholds because they keep us in confusion. 
And we are a war on the inside between what is right and what is wrong. And God wants to, he wants to heal us. He wants to deliver us. But we have to lay it down, like Sister Brand said, at the altar. Altar. Mm -hmm. We got to go yeah. back. We got to pray for people, for, uh, for everybody. For everybody. He says, take on my yoke, for my yoke is what? Easy. And too many of us have been taking on yokes of this world, which is heavy. Oh, that's mm -hmm. right. It's heavy carrying some of these yokes, these strongholds, these burdens, this confusion. It's heavy. But um, you know that our country is, is the white folks. Let me see all white, but there is a lot of bloodshed. Yeah, mistreated. Um, all kind of stuff they had done. And we're in it because we are here. Mm -hmm. And we I believe we're we going to get judged for this, for them doing all that. So we have to be prayed up for our families. We do. We live in a idolatrous nation. Yes. Idolatrous. So I have a question. What is, what is idolatry? What is idolatry? What's idolatry? I thought it was anything goes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> whatever, you know. Idolatry. Whatever in front of God. Anything you put anything before God is an idol. In yeah. Your life. Um, yeah. Anything you put before God is an idol in your life. So mm -hmm. the question I had to you, what do you think about most of the day? That's right. What wakes you up and goes oh, to bed? Yeah, yeah. What's on your mind every day that you are pondering and you're thinking about? That you're worshiping at that throne of idolatry. Mm -hmm. Think on that, right? Mm -hmm. That's a hard one. But the Bible mm -hmm. says, meditate on my word, what? Day and day. day, and day. And night. Nice. So if you can, and I'm I'm just as guilty. If we can say, "Hey Lord, I meditate on you day. You wait. I do my best, but sometimes we fall short. And some things that right. we worry about, we fearful about. Some things going on that you that you worship at that throne of idolatry. It becomes an mm -hmm. idol in your life. Mm -hmm. I told my daughter, as much as I love you, I can't put you before God. Right. Mm -hmm. We can't put nothing before God. I can't put my child, That's my right. granddaughter. I can't put my job. I can't can't put the church. <laughs> Amen. Right. Hello. I love the church, but I can't put it before God. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So something I want you all to think on that may have you a stronghold over you that could become an idol in your life if you're thinking about that thing and you're worrying about that thing or you're fearful about that thing. It wakes you up in the morning. It goes with you all day and it goes with, to bed with you at night and it wakes you up first thing in the morning. Mm. If it ain't God or the things of God. <laughs> right. Now, if it's God, you wake up in the morning, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, another day. Yeah. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. Lord, order my steps today. Walk with me and talk with me. I'm going to sing hymns in my mind. I'm going to meditate on your word. I'm going to find a scripture and meditate the day on this word, Lord. And during the day, make sure you throw up some prayers. Lord, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. It's lunchtime, yeah. Lord. Thank you for Hallelujah. keeping me and protecting me. Touch my family. Uh, he mm -hmm. may lay somebody on your heart. I pray for the branches in the name of Jesus. I pray for Pastor Clark in the name right. of Jesus. I pray for Sister Kendra, her, her new job in the name. Whatever God lays on your heart. Uh -huh. And at night, mm -hmm. thank you, Lord, for another day. Amen. 
You brought me a mighty long way. You gave me travel and mercy and you kept me. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your angels of protection around me. Mm -hmm. But understand this. Exodus 25 says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord God, am a jealous God, visiting mm -hmm. the iniquity of the fathers upon the children until the third, fourth generation, them that hate me. He said, the father's mm -hmm. iniquity. And we talked about that wow. earlier. He didn't say mm -hmm. the family, he said the father's iniquity. So, men, we got a, a tremendous job. Mm -hmm. To be the priests of our families. Right. We have to show our families that Christ is the way. Amen. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. How many of us know God is able to set you free? Yes, Lord. Yes. Proverbs 10 25 says, As the whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more, but the righteous is an everlasting foundation. Who hears the righteousness of Christ Jesus? If you're the righteousness of God, just give the Lord a hand yeah. to praise and raise your hand if you know you are the righteousness Hallelujah. of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Lord. And if you know you Hallelujah. are the righteousness of Christ Jesus, Hallelujah. you have an everlasting foundation. Now, Glory. if that don't get your wood mm -hmm. on fire, you cooking with wet wood. Because that should fire you up right now. <laughs> yeah. If you can't get that wood on fire, that wood is wet. Because right there, that scripture, yeah. that is power. You are the righteousness, and God has established you forever. Yeah. Like they say, ain't that some good news? Ain't that some good news? Yes, Lord. Oh, yeah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, man. And the Bible says, if the Son Amen. therefore shall make you free, you are free it's in the free indeed. Indeed. Who the Son has set free is free indeed. Free indeed. Yes. How many of you all want to be free Lord. from your confusion, from your strongholds? How many of us want those strongholds yes. brought down Lord. in our Thank lives? Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Hallelujah. You. Thank you, Lord. 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 And my challenge, hallelujah. My challenge is that you meditate on that word day and night for the next you meditate on John 8 36. That's be our scripture of meditation. John 8 36. You set free. So whatever you're dealing with, whatever stronghold, whatever confusion, whatever idolatrous thoughts, or whatever's that's occupying you, that's keeping you from freedom in Christ Jesus, you give it to God. Well, amen. I didn't say give it to Pastor Clark. Don't give it to me. I got enough of my stuff. All Come on. I can have. <laughs> Don't get over here. <laughs> <laughs> but I know somebody who can handle all of our problems. Uh -huh. yes, no. I love them. I know yes, someone who Lord. can handle everything. Ain't nothing so big in your life that God can't handle. That's right. Hooray. So we're going to ask God to set us free tonight. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to read this prayer. And I, as you, 
I ask you, if you have a phone, you can take a picture of it, whatever. But I want you to meditate on this prayer. I'm going to read it to folks who don't see the screen. But I want this something to be a prayer that God breaks these strongholds and bondages in our lives. Dear Heavenly Father, today my eyes have been opened to strongholds. I realize the way I've been thinking about certain situations is not according to your truth. I ask that the blood of Jesus will wash back through the bloodline and set me free from these strongholds. I will no longer overlook little sins. I will no, I will quickly repent when you show me my sin and the iniquity that is pulling me into that sin. Through your forgiveness, I choose to live a new way of life. I ask you to help me to continue yes, to do this new way of life, make new choices, and live my life according to the word. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Clark, man. I'll take the picture right. thank you for you to send out to your folks. I'll ask everybody if you have a phone. Yeah, yes, yes. Let this be our, let this be our, yes. our meditation in John 8, 3, 6. <laughs> Amen. Yes. I was, about to, I was just about to say that, you know, tonight is, uh, uh, we are in Rosh Hashanah. Amen. Uh, so, you Amen. know, once a year they would come in and ask the Lord for forgiveness. And this, uh, that prayer tonight. Yeah was right on point amen and we know yes. that it ends on sundown tomorrow so um we just believe the lord tonight so anything anything that you could uh could do as far as the uh uh repenting tonight yes. I, we know that the law that we know that the lord fulfilled the law yes. but anyone that tonight you know that would like to repent Yes. or anything like that, that this is a sacred night for a lot of people, sacred day. Um, so I say the law was not broken. You know, the Lord the Lord came to fulfill the law. Yes. Because he know that we Amen. couldn't keep it. We couldn't. Amen. Amen. So, uh, that was an excellent prayer tonight. Amen. For yeah. that, for that, for repentance tonight. So thank you very yeah. much, man of God. Amen. 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 Right on, Amen. And before I pray us out, um, that, that concludes our class on Strongholds. I thank everyone over the last four, five, six, seven weeks that we went through this course. I thank everyone for um, giving me a part of your life. I don't take it lightly. We can get back a lot of things, but we can't get back time. So when you choose to spend time with us, Amen. I appreciate that. And, I, and I'm honored. And I do my very best, Pastor Clark as well, to bring you the unadulterated truth of God. Mm -hmm. For our next Amen. class, when we start, we're going to talk about God's power with our legal right to use it. Wow. Amen. God wants us to have some breakthroughs, Man. and we have to learn how to use yes, God Lord. for these breakthroughs. So now we've identified strongholds. Now we're going to say how we break them. Legal right. With All God's right word. now. That's good. Hallelujah, somebody. Good lesson. Mm -hmm. So with that, I'm going to ask Pastor Clark, the man of God, to pray us out. And we're having one of you, Pastor Clark. Amen. Dear Father God, amen. God bless you all. It's so such wonderful news. Um, you know, this is also the new year yes. um, yeah. in the Gregorian calendar and all. And a lot of the posts that I've been posting is talking about the new man. Yes. And we know that a lot of new things are happening in the atmosphere. Praise As I was talking to Pastor Thor earlier, yes. amen, and different things. And we have to be open to what God uh, gives us. And we, he said, if you're faithful mm -hmm. over a few things, mm. uh, somebody can help me finish that. All right now. Hallelujah. So we are excited for whatever God has for us in this new season, in this new year. Yes. Um, with uh, God giving us new, the new man. So I yes. want us to have with great expectancy on, and then don't limit yourself. It, open your mind up and, 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 and don't limit yourself uh, and watch what God can do, how yes. he can open up the windows of heaven that we will all have not room enough to even receive My it all. Lord. I because that's how much he wants to I bless us. I accept that. 
um, and I, I receive it tonight for each and every person. So yes, may everyone tonight that was encouraged by this word, may this word not fall on the ground. Yes. We ask that if there's any animosity in our heart, oh, yes. Father God, blot out our transgressions, iniquities, yes, and Lord. sins uh, so that our prayers can be heard, oh, Father yes, God. Yes, uh, God, Lord. we thank you for this night of repentance. Amen. Even though we can come to the throne of grace anytime, not just yes, once Lord. a year. We can boldly come to the throne of grace, yes, but we thank you tonight even for traditions that have been made, that have been said, Father God, that you're above tradition, yes. that you're above yes. all of these things, and that you are the maker of heaven and the earth. Yes. And Father God, we feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in this house tonight, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you for blessing your manservant tonight, yes, Pastor Lord. Thor, you, Lord, Lord God, and the Branch family and all of the yes, different Lord. families that are on tonight yes, that I Lord. cannot see. But Father God, we declare and we decree victory over everything tonight yes, Lord. Uh, for the ones that have been in the hospital, yes, for the ones that yes. have been sick. Lord God, yes, Lord. Uh, Reverend Archie called me and said he was on the way back to the hospital bless tonight. Him in the name of Jesus. Bless him, oh, Father God, in the, name of Jesus. in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord God, anyone that is sick, anybody that's dealing with anything mentally, physically, yes. spiritually, or financially, Father God, we ask that you bless us tonight, Lord God. Yes, Lord. And we bless your name for a wonderful rest tonight. That yes. we will sleep well yes. tonight and yes. wake up refreshed yes. tomorrow morning, Father yes. God. If there's anything that is hurting us in our hearts, Father God, blot it out, Father God, because yes, we know Jesus. that the heart is wickedly deceitful, Father yes. God. So yes. we ask that you change our minds, Father God. Mm -hmm. Give us yes. the mind of Christ. Yes, In Christ yes. Jesus' name I pray. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Everyone have a wonderful, Pastor. wonderful night. And may God Amen. bless you. And may heaven continue to smile upon you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Bless you. Amen. Amen. I love y'all. See you next time, Lord Will. Amen. 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 Amen.